Sound Equine Veterinary Hospital asked me to come help with a 29-year-old horse experiencing foot pain. Unfortunately for Mackie, we discovered an abscess in his right front foot heel bulb and decided to wait a week before applying something more permanent than a soft ride boot. This was my first time meeting Mackie and his very caring owners that were concerned for Mackie's health. Besides some arthritis in his lower portion of his feet, Mackie had been suffering from laminitis for the first time. Just want to give a quick shout out. Thanks for joining me on my channel. In this video, we're going to go over the steps that I took for casting on a clog. So having a clean surface for your glue yep. and or cast, um, you don't have to use this. You could use your rasp. Yep. Um, so that looks like literally filing it pretty smooth um, like so but then taking the edge of your rasp okay. and scoring it where you've got now a bunch of little fiscues for your glue to stick into and I typically don't worry from about my widest part back because okay. that's what we don't want to restrict yep right. and that's where I think it'd be nice to to put a x-ray on there and go is yeah, indeed sure are uh, we on track here. When I have a healthy hoof wall, I can use a one inch sheetrock screw to temporarily or permanently help attach the clog to the foot. If I don't have a healthy hoof wall, I'll use some screws on the outside of the foot or fast setting glue to help set the shoe. While we didn't end up applying the right front shoe, I still went ahead and built it so we could apply it in a week or two. See how my clog is coming up above the shoe here? Mm -hmm. See how it's not flush? Yep. If I try to keep sucking it down, it'll strip out the hoof wall. So I back out the screw, see how it got flush with the foot? Yep. And then it sucked it yep. down. So okay. you, you start it, back it out, drive it in. Okay. This x ray provides insight into the relationship between the breakover point of the urethane clog and the tip of the coffin bone. I'm also looking at the center of rotation and evaluating the widest part of the foot. The goal is, is to provide an equal load sharing from the center of rotation, and in this case, it's slightly forward, so adjustments will be made to the clog to make some improvements. There are other aspects of this x-ray that would be interesting to discuss, but we'll need to save for another time. Now I'm going to remove the temporary set screws so I can finish trimming this foot. Being that the frog's stretched. Right. And the x-ray said absolutely. Yep. That, that's the part that gives me some confidence. Yeah. The gray line on this clog represents the widest part of the foot and also the center of rotation. What I'm doing is creating the mechanics of a wedge, but not creating a wedge. I'm also going to remove quite a bit of material from the sides as well as accentuate the breakover on the clog so that when I'm finished casting, I wouldn't have added extra material, I'll still have the desired mechanics. So here's the roller motion from the center of rotation. There's my breakover. And here you can see that I've accentuated where my cast is gonna lay on this clog so that I don't lose the mechanics that this horse needs. So you can see here that our frog isn't engaged with the bottom of his heel. So we're going to add dental impression material to help support the load of the back of the foot. Fuel paste is one of my go-tos. The ingredients in this product really help the frog and sole stay strong and healthy through the whole shoeing cycle. I then like to use Luex for hoof packing, kind of like dim. Uh, it's a third of the weight. And one of the things that I love about Luex is that it doesn't get harder during the shoeing cycle. It still has the same springy consistency. Then I use Magic Cushion. Magic Cushion has a lot of benefits of turpentine, iodine. It's got ground up leather in it. And this helps in areas where I don't want any like firm packing, but I want to be able to help toughen up the bottom of the sole. Once again, I'm going to use my set screws to help hold the clog in place. 
Now I use this to create my dam where I don't pinch the heel. And I bring these wings around on both sides. And this is the real critical part about the casting is if the casting material is put up 90 degrees within days of growing forward, it'll come into the coronary cushion and pinch it. But if you have it growing with the heel angle and the heel horn tubules, as it grows, it's an extension of the foot. I typically add a little copper sulfate to the acrylic glue while I'm mixing it up. I just ice the cake fairly primitively about, I do about two thirds of the way up normally. If I go all the way up, then it oozes out and it gets on the coronary band and, and then I made a mess, but I get a clean up. You don't put it over. I don't. You know. so, and I don't squeeze all the water out because that's what um, that's what helps secure. So I like having my thumb here, catch it with my thumb finger. It wants to fall off the heel at first. So you have to do kind of these um, gentle kind of if you pull too tight, it will come off. Yeah. Um, and I kind of overlap my shoe and my hoof at the beginning. Man, once I've got a couple wraps like that, I start winding my way up the wall. Okay. So still staying at the heel and Kind of keeping up my hoof wall. I want to stay away from the coronary band. Yep. You can cut it away if you get there. Right. And then once I've gotten there, then I start coming back down. Is that a pretty strong material? It is a pretty strong material, sir. Yeah. These are a pair of scissors handy. I don't. Yep. I got regular scissors. I don't know what I've That's right. I'm, I'm here. So I'll normally try half this. And just enough to kind of have my... Smear the top. Yep. Smear the top. Get that in. And that's where I have him. So, so this is where you can fuba your whole operation. Oh. In that you can pull the heels right off the shoe. So go from your toe, round your heel bulb, toe, heel bulb, and start there first. Go the other way around, you'll pull the heels right off your shoe, especially on these lower heel feet. The club feet is less. So um, you end up having a stronger bond with all this when you seal it. Yeah, go ahead and stick your fingernail on it. It's, it's done its thing. Oh, yeah. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. What do you think, Mackie? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, what's the closest you would want to be to that Um. Yeah, this could be fine, but... That's yeah, it's a little yeah, close. A little, yeah. I'd like it down further. I like to keep the casting material at least a half inch below the bottom of the coronary band. So let's do a quick recap here. Once you have finished trimming the foot, go ahead and clean up the front of the hoof wall from about the widest part of the foot all the way around. Remember using set screws are a great tool at helping hold the clog in place. Build any necessary mechanics into your shoe. When you're casting, be aware that you are adding material to your shoe, so make any necessary adjustments before you do your casting. Depending on what type of packing you like to use, have it all ready to go.
Doubling up on your disposable gloves is a handy trick when you need to change one out. Using set screws once again. Work quickly with your casting material. It does set up quite quick once you've got it wet. Using a little bit of glue to anchor in the last part of the cast. And lastly, when you're using stretch wrap, make sure you go up over the heel bulbs and around the toes so you don't pull the casting material off the heels. I sure hope this video has been helpful for you. Thanks for tuning in. Cheerio for now.